Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to look at x and y intercepts of lines or of linear equations. Remember from previous lessons, or if this is your first lesson, just take a look at this. Line, a line has an infinite number of points. You see here an example of several different points. They're not connected together, but if we continue to put in dots in between, they would eventually connect together an infinite number of points that are connected together and are collinear like this, They're going all in the same direction. All right, so that's what a line is. Now we're going to look specifically at two points on a line. The first is right here, and that's called the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, right here. The second is the x-intercept, and that's where a line crosses the x-axis. So these two points are first off the easiest to calculate, and secondly, they're also really important points because they're the places where they cross the, the intercept or the axis. All right, let's go ahead and do some labeling here of these lines. We're going to take a look and see what are the x-intercepts for these lines. So we'll start with the red line here over on the left. We know that this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. That's our x value for the point where it crosses the line. And our y value is 0. It does not go up or down, so it'll be 6, 0. That's the place where it crosses the y-axis, or the x-axis. Now let's look at our purple line. We have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So we would have the point negative 4. And again, zero because it doesn't move up or down off of the x-axis. It's where it crosses the x-axis right there. Our green line is the point 2, 0 because it crosses the x-axis right here, the point 1, 2. And then we don't move up or down for our y value. And the final line, the blue line, crosses right there at the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And again, zero because it's not moving up or down. So do we notice anything about these points? I hope that we notice that in every single case, our x-intercept, or the place where it crosses the x-axis, our y value is zero. That's the case every single time. All right, let's take a look here and find some y-intercepts. We'll try and um, maybe find some, some things that are similar there. Take, while we're looking through these, try and notice anything that you find similar about the x inter or the y-intercepts, the points where these lines cross the y-axis. First, we'll start with the blue line this time. It's a 0 on the x-axis, and it's 1, 2, 3 on our y-axis. So that would be the point 0, 3. Okay. Now we'll pick the, um, let's do the red line. That's the point 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. All right, that's the point where it crosses. Again, we move 0 along the x-axis, and we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where it crosses. Now let's look at the green. We go again 0, forward or backwards, but we do go down 1, 2. So the green line would cross at the point 0, negative 2. And then our purple line, the final one that we're going to look at, crosses at the point 0 and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. So what we should notice again when we look at this is that every single y-intercept has an x value of 0 every single one of them, and that will always be the case. The y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, the x-value is equal to zero every single time. So there are two ways to find intercepts. First off, if you're given a nice clear graph like what we were doing, you can just look at the graph and say, when does it cross the x-axis? When does it try to cross the y-axis? When we're not given a graph, or if the graph isn't terribly clear, you can calculate using just what we saw. To find the x-intercept, make y equal to 0. And to find the y-intercept, make x equal to 0. 
I'll show you how we do that. So let's go ahead and start off finding the mm, let's start out finding the x intercept. So we're going to start out finding the x intercept. To do that, we make y equal zero. So we'll write out our equation: 3x plus 4y equals 24. Y is being equal to zero. So I'm going to substitute zero into this equation everywhere I see the value of y. You'll see that I did that right there. Four times zero, may as well solve that one. That's pretty easy. Four times zero is zero. And then three x plus zero is simply three x. Now I'm going to solve for my value of x by dividing both sides of the equation by three. They cancel out to become one. One times x is x, and 24 divided by three is eight. So x is equal to eight. Y is equal to zero. I could write that as the point eight zero. That is my x-intercept. It crosses the x-axis at the point eight zero. Now let's go ahead and look over at our y-intercept. We'll do that in a different color. Here we go. Y-intercept. For the y-intercept, I'm going to make x equal to zero, and go through the same exact process. I'm going to substitute into the original equation and make x equal to zero. So three times zero plus four y is equal to twenty-four. Three times zero is zero. Now I'll add those together. Zero plus four y is four y. And now I'm going to solve for the variable of y by dividing both sides of the equation by four. Y is equal to 24 divided by 4, which is 6. So this y-intercept is the point 0, 6. X is equal to 0. Y is equal to 6. All right. So we've just found two points on this line. So with those two points, that would be enough if we were asked to graph this equation and we did the work properly. We could graph it using those two lines as well, or those two points as well. We do like to usually find three points for graphing, but this is one, you know, two points that are really easy to find. Make y equal zero, make x equal zero. All right, let's do one more equation real quick, um, just to make sure that we understand what we're doing. I'll start with my y-intercept, where x is equal to zero. I'm going to substitute into the equation zero everywhere I see an x. See that? So it became 10 times 0 minus 3y. 10 times 0 is 0. Minus 3y is equal to 20. I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by negative 3. And y is equal to negative 20 over 3. Wow, that's kind of a, a, a funky little fraction there. Now, I can take 20 over 3 and make it into a mixed number if I want, or try and reduce it down to lowest terms. y is equal to negative 6 and 2 thirds. But you'll notice that this here is one of those points where even if I was given a graph and I saw that the line crossed the, the y-axis, at the point negative six and two thirds, I might not be completely accurate unless I solve it using an equation. So sometimes it really is essential that we do have that equation. So my point then is zero and negative six and two thirds. And that's the point where this line crosses the y axis. That's my y intercept. All right. Let's take um, our x intercept, see if hopefully we get something a little nicer for that. For our x-intercept, y is going to be equal to 0. So I'll solve 10x minus 3y is equal to 20. 10x is equal to or minus 3 times 0 is equal to 20. 10x minus 0 is equal to 20. That leaves me with 10x is equal to 20. I'm going to divide both sides by 10 giving me x is equal to 2. So the point where it crosses the x-axis is then 2, 0. All right, that one is a little bit nicer. 
All right. So again, you can find the x and y intercepts using a graph, or you can find them using math. If you're looking for the x-axis, you change y to being equal to zero. If you're looking for the y-intercept, then you make the x value equal to zero.